Hello, welcome to this week of uh, lectures on uh, polymers. Uh, we are in the 11th week where we are discussing uh, topics related to polymer processing and recycling techniques. Having discussed properties and applications of various kinds, it is very important for us to uh, understand what are the different techniques by which we actually process the polymers and achieve the final product uh, that we would like. And uh, towards this, uh, one of the aspects that we have discussed is in terms of uh, measuring the rheological properties of uh, polymer melts and solutions as well as polymeric gels. And uh, in this lecture, uh, we will uh, focus on the rheological models and uh, the focus will remain on uh, concepts related to rheological modeling. So, we will uh, uh, look at some class of uh, rheological models that are useful in order to describe the viscoelastic properties of polymeric systems. Uh, then we will look at some examples of viscous models which are the simplest possible models and these have been known for uh, 40, 50 years and uh, as a first approximation they can be used at times. However, uh, given the computational power that, that we have these days and uh, as we discussed flow simulations and uh, heat transfer simulations have become very important uh, in terms of uh, simulating molding or other uh, processing operations. We these days use a uh, lot of complicated model and we will therefore take a close look at one of such models. So, the class of models that uh, are uh, generally available can be uh, looked at uh, from uh, the point of view of uh, energy storage and energy dissipation. And uh, energy storage of course, we looked at in the context of solids uh, where we looked at linear and nonlinear elastic models. Uh, for fluids, uh, we basically have uh, uh, the viscous models where the state of stress is only a function of strain rate at that instant of time. So, stress is related to only strain rate and uh, also uh, the value of stress at a given instant of time is directly related to the strain rate at that instant of time. So, the example of this of course, is in terms of uh, most commonly known Newtonian fluid where it is a linear model between stress and strain rate and the proportionality constant is uh, viscosity. When we uh, look at non-Newtonian fluids, one of the uh, implications is that uh, stress is no longer proportional to strain rate. So, in this case still stress is a function of strain rate at that instant of time but it is not a proportional function. So, therefore, uh, stress is related to strain rate, but the proportionality constant itself is related to the strain rate. And uh, therefore, we choose to call uh, this viscosity now apparent viscosity because it is no longer a material constant, but it is a material function and the material function varies as a function of strain rate. Uh, shear thinning, shear thickening, uh, pseudoplastic or dilatant these are examples of uh, these nonlinear viscous fluids or generalized Newtonian fluids. Uh, we call them generalized Newtonian because if you look at the structure of the equation, it still remains the same. It is still stress proportional to strain rate. So, that general structure still remains the same. As we have seen in case of uh, Voigt model or Maxwell model or uh, standard linear solid model, it is not only stress and strain and strain rate are related to each other, stress rate and so variety of quantities are involved in terms of relating stress and strain to each other. While in case of uh, viscous fluid, the instantaneous value of strain rate defines stress or vice versa. Instantaneous value of stress defines strain rate in the material. So, the general viscoelastic uh, fluid uh, could be thought of as a, a material where a state of stress is a function of strain, strain rate, stress rate and variety of other uh, derivatives. And uh, the most general way we can write this is to say that stress is related to stress rate, is related to rate of change of stress rate and related to strain, rate of change of strain and this is rate of change of strain rate and even higher order derivatives. So, this is the most general statement possible for a linear viscoelastic fluid that we can think of. Of course, uh, if you put selective constants to 0, you can get Maxwell model or Voigt model or any such model. So, I, I do not know if you can spot Maxwell model in this. So, uh, for example, if uh, all the coefficients which are uh, CS2 and uh, CS3 and all of that, if they are all equal to 0 
And similarly, if C e 0 and uh, C e 2, C e 3, these are all uh, equal to 0, then uh, I, I hope you can recognize by that what is C s 0 for Maxwell model, what is C s 1 for Maxwell model and what is C e 1 for Maxwell model. So, do that exercise. You can see that all the viscoelastic models that we have discussed belong to this class of models. So, let us look at a uh, little bit more closely at some of the viscous models. And uh, Keru Yusuda model is uh, one of the most commonly used uh, model for describing the non Newtonian nature of viscosity. It is a model which can describe shear thinning uh, very well. Uh, so, the general response of the model is as follows that uh, at, uh, so if we look at let us say stress as a function of uh, strain uh, rate. So, we can look at uh, stress as a function of uh, strain rate. Uh, we can see that at if strain rate is low, then uh, viscosity is constant. So, this is called the Newtonian plateau. So, where viscosity is constant and so if we subject a polymeric melt to very low strain rates, it behaves like a Newtonian fluid where viscosity is constant. This is also called the zero shear viscosity. Zero shear viscosity is a very important determinant uh, in terms of what is the entanglement in the material, what is the molar mass of the material, what temperature we are. So, looking at zero shear viscosity does give us uh, some important clues about the uh, structure of polymer. From a po polymer processing point of view of course, we need to know the viscosity at all different strain rates. And so, when strain rate is increased, then the shear thinning uh, nature is obvious in case of polymer melts and solution. And so, shear thinning at moderate and high shear rates. And uh, Karyosuda model also shows that at very high shear rates, viscosity again becomes constant. So, therefore, this is something which is observed in case of let us say a solvent. So, eta infinity is related to the solvent uh, viscosity. So, at very high strain rates, uh, we observe the behavior where all the chains are aligned in the field uh, flow field direction and therefore, viscosity modification due to polymer addition is much less and so, eta infinity is closer to the solvent viscosity. Of course, in case of polymer melts, what you often most uh, 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 most of the time is some behavior like this. So, there is only polymer melt and no solvent present. So, there is only shear thinning observed but there is a Newtonian plateau at lower shear rates. So, for polymer melts, we can generally modify this model uh, by setting eta infinity to 0 and then we uh, get the uh, simpler version of uh, the Karuyasuda model which also goes by the name of cross model at times. As an exercise, what you could do is uh, try to see if you can set uh, 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 lambda to be a large value or lambda to be a small value or n to be uh, equal to 1, what happens to it, this Karuyasuda model. And I am sure you would be able to show that uh, Karuyasuda model will reduce to power law or Newtonian fluid model. Remember power law historically has been one of the most commonly used model for describing uh, the shear thinning nature. Uh, all of these plots by the way are usually on a log log scale. So, many of the properties whether it is G prime, G double prime or uh, stress strain curves because we are looking at decades in terms of time scales. So, we go for strain rate uh, 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power 4. Frequencies we go from 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 to the power 3. So, therefore, there are decades of time scales involved and generally uh, these plots are always on a log log scale. So, if you have a power law which implies that eta is uh, related uh, to, so this is uh, by the way eta. So, eta is related to strain rate gamma dot to the power n minus 1. So, that uh, this particular uh, slope will uh, be exhibited. So, this particular behavior would be exhibited just as a straight line because it is a power law. So, Karyasuda model can show all these different behaviors. So, the other model which is very commonly used is called Herschel-Bultle model 
this is a set of models which are uh, useful for polymeric systems if there are fillers in it. Because what happens is if you have uh, the polymers with uh, all their entanglements, if we allow shearing to happen at a very slow rate, then entanglements can slip past each other and therefore we get perfectly viscous behavior and therefore zero shear viscosity as constant viscosity. But what if we now in this polymeric system put a set of fillers? Let us say we put nanotubes or we put glass fibers then these glass fiber can start interacting with each other and they can act like network points. They can bridge the macromolecules with each other. So therefore, uh, through interactions between glass fiber and glass fiber or through interaction between glass fiber and the macromolecule, this overall system ends up behaving like a system which is networked. And what this implies is whenever the network points are strong, then we will not observe the viscous behavior, the fluid like behavior, but this would start behaving like more solid like, like a cross linked rubber kind of a system. So therefore, if you look at uh, viscosity as a function of strain rate for uh, these kind of systems, shear thinning is observed at higher strain rate. But when you go to lower uh, frequencies or uh, lower strain rates, what happens is again viscosity becomes very high because these cross link point make the material respond like uh, almost a solid and therefore there is an yield stress in the material. So generally up to certain strain rate, there is no flow at all and beyond a certain strain rate because stress has exceeded the yield stress value, flow starts happening in the material and therefore these materials are called yield stress fluids. In fact, you can see that herschel berkeley model, if I set uh, tau yield to be 0, then it becomes a power law kind of a shear thinning material. So herschel berkeley model is a yield stress uh, model plus shear thinning model. And uh, so for values of stress up to tau yield, there is no flow in the material. And when uh, the stress is greater than tau yield, there is a constant value of strain rate which is reached and the material behaves like a shear thinning viscous fluid. So this uh, herschel berkeley model also you can do an exercise and show that it reduces to variety of simpler models. So this is an overview related to the viscous model. Now let us uh, finish this lecture by looking at a nonlinear viscoelastic model. Uh, since this is an introductory course on polymer, we will not spend a whole lot of time because there is a course you can do on nonlinear viscoelasticity of polymeric systems. But let us spend some time to understand how the nonlinear models are not very different conceptually compared to some of the things that we have already discussed in such an introductory course. So this is Pantheon Tanner model, which is uh, one of the most commonly used model for uh, polymer processing and any computational package that you get these days, uh, you will see that this model is uh, available as one of the menu for us to choose. Now the linear viscoelastic model that we wrote where stress, stress rate, rate of change of st stress rate, strain, strain rate. So the same thing is valid for a no all large deformations or nonlinear viscoelastic model also. So if I were to write a very general mathematical relation describing a viscoelastic fluid for very large deformations and for nonlinear uh, deformation, then all I have to say is stress, stress rate rate of change of stress, strain, strain rate, rate of change of strain rate and so on. Also we may have stress multiplied by stress, so non-linear terms again. So stress and stress square are related to strain or stress is related to strain and strain squared. So this is an example of a non-linear model. Instead of using infinitesimal strain tensor or strain tensor which is valid only for small deformation, we use these strains which we have discussed already uh, when we discussed rubber and nonlinear elasticity. These are called either finger strain tensor or green strain tensor. And the rates that are evaluated 
are indicated using this symbol which is probably not familiar to most of you. So, you do not have to worry about for this course purpose, but these are called convected derivatives. Uh, some of you might know uh, that there is partial derivative, then there is total derivative, then there is material or substantial derivative. So, substantial derivative is evaluated by moving along with the material or it is also called we evaluate it in Lagrangian frame. So, similarly, if we have to calculate stress rate, we must evaluate the derivative in what is called a convected frame. So, we get convected along with the material, we get deformed along with the material. So, mathematically to be consistent in terms of getting a response where the material response does not depend on how we define it or it is also called frame indifference. So, those of you who are interested could read more about what is meant by frame indifference, it is also called material objectivity. You can see the words objectivity and indifference. So, basically material response should not depend on how we describe it. So, if we use this very simple physical notion and try to implement it in a mathematical sense where stress and strain and strain rate are all quantities which have 9 components, they are all tensors, then the convected rate de definition automatically becomes one of the useful tools. So, therefore, nonlinear viscoelastic models are described in terms of these convected derivatives. So, let us uh, stop here from the point of view of our course uh, right now in terms of this discussion related to nonlinear viscoelastic model, but look at how the governing equation looks like for this PTT model for a simple shear flow. Uh, in, in terms of uh, what we will look at is a situation where uh, we let us say take the material between two parallel plates and uh, therefore, we have this rectangular coordinate system x and y and if we take this uh, polymer melt which is a complicated uh, uh, material and shear it between parallel plates, then what we will have is gamma dot y x and tau y x will be the stress components which are important. So, therefore, this is the y x component of stress for PTT model. I have said that you know because it is a tensor model there are 9 components, but we will not worry about it. But let us stare at this model and try to see how much more complicated nonlinear viscoelastic model can get compared to models like Maxwell and other models. Now, if you look at this model and uh, I am just going to use some terms to indicate that uh, you know if you drop these terms, then you will get back Maxwell model. So, for example, if this term is dropped out, this term is dropped out and this term is dropped out and uh, c is equal to 1, I hope you can spot that it is nothing but the Maxwell model. So, any nonlinear viscoelastic model quite generally is an extension or more complicated terms compared to Maxwell model. But from our point of view, other thing to notice is even though this is a y x component of stress, look at some of the other terms which are involved. So, there is tau y y. So, the normal stress in y direction is also involved, normal stress in x direction is also involved and uh, there is a derivative of strain rate itself involved. There is also multiplication between stress and strain rate. So, you can see that this is a much more complicated model and as this equation generally says that you know stress strain rate and then multiplication of stress with stress, multiplication of strain with strain, multiplication of stress and strain rate, all of them are dependent. In fact, PTT model which is one of the uh, better known models of polymer processing has many of these terms. Additionally, look at what this C is. C in fact involves tau xx, tau yy and tau zz also and it is a nonlinear term again where it is an exponential to the power stress itself. Of course, uh, the original arguments for developing uh, a model such as PTT are due to the fact that polymers are heavily entangled system, there is only reptation motion possible when uh, polymer molecules have to move and when we are trying to 
make them flow in a polymer processing operations, chain, chains get stretched. But at the same time, because of all these entanglements, there are only uh, a number of ways in which the junction points, which are the entanglement points, can break and reform. So all of that is captured first uh, using hypothesis, and then a mathematical model is developed around it. So PTT model is uh, one of the successful models which is used for polymer processing. Uh, from the point of view of uh, our uh, seeking solutions, uh, if we are uh, serious students of uh, nonlinear viscoelasticity, we have to understand these models. But at times, if we are practitioners of uh, polymer processing industry, we could use computational package, but it still is important for us to understand the models and various terms that are associated with such models. So with this, uh, we will uh, close uh, this discussion related to rheological models. We have seen very simple models uh, of viscous or uh, some very complicated model of nonlinear viscoelastic response. And for those of you who are interested, can uh, take a look uh, of a course uh, which is uh, by me also uh, on uh, rheology of complex materials. And uh, on YouTube, you will find various discussion related to nonlinear viscoelastic models also. Thank you.